Hi friend, David here from Learn Stage Lighting. And in this video, I want to talk to you. I'm going to show you how to lay out within your trusses a lighting rig that's really interesting. Uh, if you've been working with lighting for a while, you've been looking at concert rigs, um, paying attention to what people do, this might seem elementary to you. But it's one of those things that I get a lot of questions on and uh, cover actually a good bit inside of Learning Stage Lighting Labs, but I realized that I really haven't done an introduction to this for YouTube, um, and so I wanted to do that today. And so what we talked about so far this month in this playlist, which you can check out the first video here if you haven't already, is how do you, how do I think about laying out a lighting rig when I'm putting together a show? And first we talked about, okay, where do we place our trusses or our different lighting positions? Then we went into last week, you can catch that here, where do we put um, individual fixtures, you know, overall, so that we can both light the people on stage really well and also get those great beam looks and really big stuff and, and have interesting looks in the air or just if we don't have atmosphere like haze, um, be able to point our lights a number of different places. Now today, we're back on the same stage as last week, and I wanna talk about laying out the, the lighting itself on the truss. So what you're gonna see here in this rig is if we fly overhead, there are a couple tricks that you're gonna see a lot. Uh, the first is on this back truss, okay? If you look at, pretty much any typical lighting rig, and this is my first big tip, you're gonna see this spot, wash, spot, wash, spot configuration, okay? Where every other light is a spot or a wash type fixture. And this can really help you because it just automatically creates some really good, interesting looks, right? Because the characteristic of how the light beam looks, the spot versus the wash beam, are different, and so that makes it so that you automatically get some some interesting looks. Not only that, but like I did here, I've, I've got a three color look going on right here. And so I just set all my spots to one color, you know, in my console, spots, color one, washes, color two on this truss, and then I've got a second set of washes on a lower truss doing a third color. And that allows you to really quickly program and have it look really great. Uh, not only that, but you can then work to your fixtures, um, their strengths. Because a spot type fixture is typically going to be better at those non-saturated colors because a lot of times most spot fixtures are a white source where we're using subtractive color. We're using CMY color mixing um, or a color wheel. Whereas a spot a wash type fixture, typically an LED these days, um, it's been that way for a while, it's typically a red, green, blue, and or other color additive source. So it's, its strength lies in doing saturated colors best, okay? They both can do either, but they have their strengths. And you can play to those because then you've got the same truss, you've got a two color look, say you've got a deep red and a yellow. Well, the yellow is gonna look better on the spot fixture because there's less color in the way of the white. You're further, you're not that far from white. And the red's gonna look best on the wash fixture. You can switch it. Um, it gives you an interesting dynamic because if you use what they're both not as good at, then the red's gonna be dimmer um, and the uh, yellow on the wash fixture is gonna be brighter. Um, and it's gonna make the spots kind of come back and uh, kind of hide back there, um, maybe disappear completely. So that's one tip, spot wash, spot wash. Um, and that really works for any type of light. If you've got beam or whatever, just alternating your lights in a mirrored fashion uh, can really help you create some great looks. Now, that brings up a point about what about center fixtures? I don't typically do a center fixture you can, uh, with moving lights, it doesn't move much. Um, you know, I don't really have a dog in the fight, uh, but I, I got used to, and a lot of my early designs never had a center fixture. We just always had an even number of fixtures on the show. Done is done. Um, but if you've got fixtures that are in cases of two and you want to have a spare, you know, then doing a center fixture is great. Um, in some consoles, it's easier to, to make your groups that way. Others, it doesn't matter. So not a big dog in the fight there. Um, 
when we're talking about things like blinders or a beam fixture or even just these LED bars, these color band pixels that I have up here, um, I like to put those on top of the truss. Not only do I get this cool look right here that I can throw on the back wall, um, if that were a real back wall in this real fake venue, um, but it gives you that different look where, you know, if you shut these off or make them disappear, then you just have spot wash, spot wash. Or you can go just the blinders at a low level and you take your spots and your washes. Where did I put those? And your washes, what happens when you don't la layer your console, label your console rather, and you get a different look there from that. Uh, you know, maybe you even blank all the way out. This is why I like... Um, using a oh i don't have a fader for those pars this is why i like going ahead and having a lower section like i do on either side here uh, when i'm laying this out i'm really thinking about okay you know how can i get more depth and so while these are trusses they look like they're in the air this could easily be something like a stand or a truss that's ground supported i mean it's only like eight feet up there um and that allows us to get a different layer. We can light up down here or up here or both, including um, doing our, our top guys there. So we can get a really full look and then we can start to break it down as well. We can pull stuff out, um, et cetera, put stuff in, really get a variety of different looks. Uh, one last trick for today's video. I know I've thrown a bunch of information at you in this video is one thing you can do, I didn't do it in this rig, that can be interesting, is if you have a bunch of a given fixture, let's actually just look at it with these uh, these little ADJZ4s, which are right here. Um, if you have a bunch of a given fixture, you can actually go ahead between a couple different trusses and triangulate them, and it can look really good. So what I mean by that is just literally just going ahead and grabbing all of the like fixtures. Come on, buddy, there you go. And then arranging them basically in, in triangle type looks. And we're getting blinded here, but what that basically looks like is that you go and alternate front to back trusses or in the vertical space if you've got different layers of trusses like this um, you basically go okay if i do spot wash spot wash on my back truss then if i have a mid truss or a mid lighting position i can do the opposite and that gives me a triangulation so that if i just have all my washes on or i just have my spots on it's more interesting than if we had taken these four guys who we just moved. And yeah, let's grab them again. Do, 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 do. There, that guy, that guy, that guy, that guy. And if, you know, if these guys were all just where they were, you know, on the same level, they're kind of in a straight line together. Or if these were up on the taller truss, but in the same vertical realm, it can look powerful if you have a bunch in a row like that, but ultimately it doesn't look as good as if we offset them. If we get that triangulation, it, it makes something that's really pleasing to the eye and looks really cool uh, because it looks like a complete look. And then you bring in your other spots or, you, you know, you flip between the two and you can get a really good look between the two. Some really interesting stuff. So. At the end of the day, uh, takeaways from this video, just um, the, the best thing to do is stay symmetrical. Uh, get that tape measure out when you're hanging at lights and when you're designing them. And when you can, if you work in some triangles to your design and some different layers of light, making it so that each type of fixture can hopefully make a look on the stage that feels complete uh, by itself then you're really going to have a lot of possibilities out of a lighting rig. And ultimately, my goal for you as you watch this is to look at the kind of lighting rigs you use. Maybe you've got it at your church or stuff your band has or whatever, and help you to find ways to lay it out so that you have more options when you're programming and running your show on how to make things look really great. 
awesome. If you've enjoyed this, be sure to like this video, subscribe here on Learn Stage Lighting. And if you're brand new to this whole thing, you're like, I don't know what to do, you know, head over to LearnStageLighting.com. I've got a free guide on how to begin with lighting in your specific type of lighting. I want to get it in your hands. So hop over there to grab that free guide. We'll email it to you and we'll see you here on uh, Learn Stage Lighting YouTube in the free guide and around the web. Have a great day.